Great to be with you, Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a common reason why you might be referred to a cardiologist is if you are having symptoms of chest pain. Let's go through how I evaluate patients who come to me with this symptom. Now, chest pain, if it occurs acutely, occurs rather suddenly, associated with pain in the chest, heaviness going down the arms, up in the jaw, up through the neck, feeling sick, vomiting, feeling short of breath, feeling at all unwell, is obviously a medical emergency. So we urge anybody with that symptom to call their local emergency services or paramedics to seek advice. That is a medical emergency emergency. And the best thing we can do as doctors and nurses and paramedics is to reassure you that nothing major is going on, but there is an urgent need to do what we call a cardiogram or an electrocardiogram to place some leads on the chest to identify if this acute presentation of chest pain is because of a heart attack. But in people who have these symptoms that are ongoing over a long period of time, this is a common reason why somebody will get referred to a cardiologist. And I want to go through a little bit about how I evaluate my patients when I'm discussing this symptom with them and what further tests may be appropriate to evaluate what are the possible causes. Now, in the majority of cases, I am comforted by the fact that I can reassure the majority of my patients and say there is no heart-related problem with respect to your chest pain. But that happens after a series of assessments and obviously taking a detailed history, examining a patient, doing some preliminary tests that are useful to help delineate the causes of chest pain. But I want to go through my approach. Essentially, is that we look at chest pain as being coming from the heart or cardiac, and then other or non-cardiac causes of chest pain. And the most important, and obviously the key ones that need to be evaluated promptly, are the ones that are occurring because of a heart condition. And when we look at the, the heart-related causes, let's go through these in detail. And there are three or four that are the key ones that I always have in the back of my mind. One is a condition known as angina. Angina is pain in the chest, tightness in the chest that develops with exertion usually, pushing yourself, walking, going up a hill, going up a flight of stairs or two, and then you get the sensation of a heaviness around the chest. Now, where is this located? It's not necessarily always on the left side. Now, the heart is really in the center and slightly to the left of our chest, but it doesn't mean that pain that occurs on the right side of the chest is not related to the heart. That can also be from a heart cause. But angina is a condition that we call is either stable, which occurs with exertion, pushing yourself, and goes away when you rest. In an emergency situation, that pain, if it develops when you're at rest, we term unstable angina. And that needs, again, very prompt attention to evaluate what are the possible causes. So angina itself can be pain that occurs in the center of the chest. It can go down the arm, can be both arms, more frequently down the left arm. It can be felt up in the neck region towards the jaw. It can sometimes be felt in the back. And as I mentioned, it does worsen with exertion. It may be associated with shortness of breath, just not catching your, your breath when you're pushing yourself. Now, when you have any of those symptoms, it's important to seek medical attention because that needs to be promptly evaluated. But angina is obviously one of the more common reasons that I deal with as a cardiologist when we're evaluating possible heart conditions. A heart attack is another cause of chest pain. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when this occurs abruptly, acutely, without any warning, suddenly feeling a heaviness, a tightness in the chest, constriction, and then you can't breathe, it might be going up into the neck, into the jaw, feeling sick, feeling nauseous, vomiting. These are all critically important symptoms to not ignore. So angina, 
normally is the stable condition that happens with exertion when we're pushing ourselves and that occurs because of blood plaque buildup within the arteries of our heart and that restricts the amount of blood flowing to the heart muscle itself. The muscle, the heart muscle needs oxygen, needs blood to do its job. But when it's starved of oxygen because of a blockage, and we've had separate videos on cholesterol and plaque and what causes that and the cardiac risk factors, but when that happens, angina can occur. So we've spoken about angina, we've spoken of course about heart attack and the importance of making sure that we don't ignore symptoms of a heart attack. The heart attack itself is caused by a complete blockage often in the artery where plaque might have built up over time but a little bit of that plaque or cholesterol fat has broken off and then clot is formed within that artery and that clot if it completely blocks the artery is termed a major or an acute heart attack, an acute myocardial infarction. So they are sort of the two main heart related causes that we always look for. But there are other conditions and we see in an emergency situation when somebody presents with acute chest pain, there might be pain that goes also into the back. And that's often a telltale sign that sometimes we're looking at a possible problem with the aorta or the large vessel that comes from the heart that delivers blood and oxygen to our, to our body. Well, when there is a condition known as an aortic dissection or a little tear in the wall of the aorta, well, that can cause significant compromise. It can make you feel very, very unwell. It can cause a condition known as shock, where blood pressure is very, very profoundly low, and that needs urgent attention. But fortunately, it is uncommon. So that is very, very reassuring. Another cardiac cause of chest pain is pericarditis. And no doubt, this is a common condition. Pericarditis involves inflammation of the lining around the heart. Now we have our, a little sac around our heart that contains a small amount of fluid in the pericardial space. That's the space around the heart that is used, I like to say, as a bit of a lubricant for the heart to, to pump. Well then when that sac becomes inflamed, that can cause this condition of pericarditis. The chest pain felt with pericarditis is somewhat different. Chest pain can be quite sharp in nature. It can become worse when we take a breath in. It can be affected by posture. Leaning back can make it feel a bit worse. Stooping forward can make it feel a bit better. The position is one of the key questions that I ask. Is this pain worse when you change posture or position? Is the pain worse when you take a breath? There might be an associated infection, a virus, a runny nose, a cold, a gastro bug, some diarrhea that you might have had. And all it takes is a little bit of that inflammation to actually affect the lining of the heart to cause this pericarditis. We are seeing several more of these presentations in the setting of the mRNA COVID vaccines. And there's been a lot of that said in the, and discussed in the media, but no doubt these vaccines have got an, a side effect that they can cause inflammation and irritability and swelling and edema around the lining of the heart to cause this condition known as pericarditis. Now, when we look at non-heart related causes, and these are perhaps the more common reasons why somebody might have chest pain. Now, that can range from various causes, and I like to break it down into looking at the musculoskeletal side of things. And musculoskeletal, we talk about the ribs, the bones, the, the muscles around the chest wall. There's a lot of cartilages, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, connective tissue around the chest wall that can itself become inflamed. And in particular, a condition known as costochondritis. In costochondritis, somebody might have chest pain that might be sharp and might be very focal. And often patients say, oh, look, press a bar, I can feel it right in here. When I press, it's quite sore. And when you do examine the patient, that pain is reproducible when you press on that area. And that is very much a localized inflammation that occurs in that setting. It might be associated with some sort of trauma, some musculoskeletal injury, sports injuries, gym work activities, you might have been doing some upper limb workout and you, you did that a few days ago and then a few days later you feel this 
pain. Again, costochondritis is another common cause. There are also other musculoskeletal conditions, and one in particular is more of a chronic condition known as fibromyalgia. And we will have a separate video on this because it is a common, common cause of generalized muscle aches and pains, and also fatigue. So it's a very important one to not ignore. But that itself can present with pain that occurs all over the chest wall, shoulders, up in the arms, back, neck, and all around the body. So we've talked about costochondritis, we've talked about fibromyalgia, but of course any little trauma, any rib fracture, any fall and injury to the chest wall that results in bruising will, of course, give you chest pain. Then when we look at lung causes or respiratory causes, that's another common one to look at and also one to not ignore, particularly if pain is occurring rather acutely and is associated with breathing. So what we call pleuritic chest pain, pain that worsens when we take a deep breath in and it catches us and, and we feel also short of breath. In that situation, we do need to run some very prompt tests to evaluate for a possible clot. And we might see that in somebody, they might have a history of clots in the past, a DVT or a clot in the leg. And of course, the concern is there that some of that clot has traveled and flicked off into the lungs. Also, we would ask a patient if they've had any long haul travel, if they've been flying, been immobile for a period of several days, have been injured otherwise, and have not been doing much activity, or might be a smoker, might be on a contraceptive pill. These are important risk factors. And we also ask for whether there might be a past history of a previous clot or whether there's a family history. And there are some genetic factors that predispose our blood to becoming a little thicker and stickier. And we would often do several tests to evaluate for underlying causes of clots. Other lung causes, well, as we talked about pericarditis, a similar manifestation can occur in the lining of the lungs. The lungs themselves have a lining, and when that becomes inflamed, again, because of an infection, virus, then that could develop a condition known as pleurisy. And that can cause pain, particularly worse with breathing or inspiration. So we've talked about the cardiac, we've talked about the non-cardiac, focusing on things like musculoskeletal, the lungs, but another common reason why chest pain can occur is because of the gastrointestinal system and the digestive system. So heartburn, reflux, you might feel this burning sensation going up from the tummy, up into the chest, up into the throat. There might be a sense of acid in the mouth sometimes, and this heartburn and reflux can also mimic heart pain, and that's why it's called heartburn. Because equally, with angina pain, you might also get a burning sensation. Well, with this condition, you equally can get this burning sensation that might be, there might be a history of previous gastric esophageal reflux disease. Um, you might be on anti-inflammatories, and in particular, a source of anti-inflammatories that we often ask whether patients are on are ones called non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. They can cause a lot of irritation and inflammation in the stomach and the gastrointestinal system. Other causes of chest pain from the digestive system, well, gallstones, common cause. Now, you might often get right upper quadrant pain in the tummy, but that pain can radiate up into the chest. And, of course, it's an important consideration. So we ask, what type of pain is it? Is it worse when you've eaten a meal, particularly a fatty meal? You might get that pain. You might have nausea. You might be having a lot of vomiting. So that's another important symptom to look for. Then there are other causes and not uncommon, there is a condition called shingles. And that's post a virus, a uh, varicella zoster virus. You might have had a history of that in the past, but shingles can cause a significant amount of pain. It can be burning and can persist for a long, long time, even after you've noticed the development of a rash. And then, of course, there are other conditions that are not related to the heart. It can be related to stress, worry, anxiety. And they're important considerations because... It's often the chicken or the egg scenario here that I, I don't like to just put things down to anxiety. There's often something that is causing the pain. And of course, having pain will make us more anxious, will make us more concerned, will make us panic, will make us worry. And that can trigger off more symptoms. So we don't want to be ignoring any of these symptoms. So when we have any of these symptoms, any pain in the chest, 
The simple things that we do, as I said, we take a history, we examine the patient, and some simple tests can be useful. The ECG or the electrocardiogram is very, very important. There are some blood tests that can be done acutely to work out whether there might be an underlying heart attack or an acute problem or not. There's a chest x-ray, there's a scan of the heart called an echocardiogram, but also then a CT scan might be necessary to evaluate other causes, looking at the aorta, looking for any clots in the lungs. And most often, as I mentioned, we can reassure you that there is no underlying heart condition and we work through the other causes that we talked about today. So hopefully you found that useful. It's an important topic. It's a common topic to see a specialist or a cardiologist for. And please feel free to provide your feedback and comments. Let me know also about what topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. I really appreciate that. Until the next one, bye for now.